All right, let's kick things off with a little secret. I love mochi. There, I said it. Now, why did I just spill the beans on my obsession with mochi? Because that's what we're diving into today the art and science of revealing our inner selves. Welcome to the world of self-disclosure. Let's get into it. Ever wonder why you feel closer to someone after they share a personal story or a quirky fact about themselves? Or why you feel a rush of trust when someone opens up to you? That, my friends, is the magic of self-disclosure. It's not just about spilling your favorite mochi flavor. It's about building bridges in relationships, one truth at a time. Now, I'm not just pulling this out of thin air. We've got some heavy hitters in the research world backing this up. We're talking about insights from Green, Darlesia, Matthews, and a few other brilliant minds who've delved deep into the world of personal relationships. So buckle up, we're about to embark on a journey to understand the essence of self-disclosure and how it shapes our connections. Grab your favorite warm beverage and let's get comfy. We're diving in now. All right, picture this. You're at a gathering, maybe it's a casual coffee date or a business meeting. You're in the middle of a conversation and suddenly you're hit with a dilemma. Do I share this story? Is it too much? We've all been there, right? It's like standing at the edge of a diving board, deciding whether to take the plunge. But what's really at play here? Enter the world of Green et al. 2006. These researchers dove deep into the realm of self-disclosure. And let me tell you, they unearthed some gems. It's not just about blurting out your life story or keeping everything under wraps. Shh. It's a delicate dance, a balance of revealing and concealing, all in the pursuit of genuine connection. Imagine self-disclosure as a tapestry. Each thread represents a story, an experience, a piece of who you are. When you choose to share a thread with someone, you're not just handing them a piece of fabric. You're inviting them to weave their own threads into the tapestry, creating a shared narrative. It's intimate, it's profound, and it's the bedrock of trust. But here's the twist. Not every thread is meant for every person. Green and his colleagues emphasize the strategic nature of self-disclosure. It's about discerning which threads to share, with whom, and when. It's about understanding the power of vulnerability and the beauty of mutual discovery. Now, you might be wondering, why does this matter? Well, think about it. Think about your most cherished relationships. What makes them special? I'm willing to bet it's the moments of genuine self-disclosure. You know, the times when you felt truly seen and understood. That, my friends, is the magic of self-disclosure. It transforms surface-level chit-chat into meaningful conversations. It's the bridge that spans the gap between two souls. But, and this is crucial, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. What works with your best friend might not work with a colleague. The key is to tune in, to listen not just to the words, but to the emotions, the nuances, the body language. It's about creating a safe space where both you and the other person feel valued and heard. So the next time you're on the fence about sharing a personal story or a dream, take a moment. Reflect on the tapestry of your life. Which threads are you ready to share and with whom? Remember, it's not just about the act of sharing. It's about the journey of discovery, the dance of intimacy, and the joy of connection. In the grand tapestry of life, each thread, each story, each moment of self-disclosure adds depth, color, and richness. So weave with intention, share with purpose, and celebrate the beautiful mosaic of connections you create along the way. All right, so let's take a moment and think about the best conversations we've ever had. Those moments when time seemed to stand still and you felt a genuine connection with someone. What made those conversations so special? If you're scratching your head, don't worry. We're about to dive deep into the heart of intimacy and the role of self-disclosure in forging those unforgettable connections. 
First off, let's get one thing straight. Intimacy isn't just about romantic relationships. It's about that profound connection you feel with a close friend, a family member, or even a colleague. It's that feeling of being truly seen, heard, and understood. And guess what? It doesn't happen by accident. Intimacy is an art, a dance of two souls coming together. And like any dance, it requires practice, patience, and most importantly, the right partner. Enter Race and Shaver, the dynamic duo of relationship research. In their groundbreaking work from 1988, they delve deep into the intricacies of intimacy. Their findings? Intimacy is a two-way street built on the pillars of self-disclosure and mutual understanding. Let's break that down a little bit. Imagine you're sitting across from someone sharing a story from your past. As you speak, you're not just sharing words. You're sharing a piece of your soul. That self-disclosure it's the act of opening up, of letting someone in. But here's the thing, self-disclosure alone is not enough. For true intimacy to blossom, the person on the other side needs to truly listen, understand, and reciprocate. That's the kicker. It's a delicate balance, a dance of give and take. Now, you might be thinking, oh, okay, well, that sounds great, but how do I actually do it? Well, it's not as complicated as it sounds. Start small, share a memory, a dream, or even a fear. And as you do, pay close attention to the other person. Are they engaged? Are they sharing in return? Remember, intimacy is a two-way street. It's not just about bearing your soul to the other person. It's about creating a safe space for the other person to do the same. But here's a word of caution. Not every dance partner is the right fit. And that's okay. Not every conversation will lead to profound intimacy and not every relationship is meant to go deep. The key is to find those special individuals with whom you can truly connect. Those who, as you open up, will open up in return. And when you find those individuals, cherish them. Because true intimacy, the kind that Race and Shaver talked about, is rare. It's a gift, a treasure to be nurtured and protected. So take the time to cultivate it, practice the art of self-disclosure, seek understanding, and most importantly, be present. Because in the end, it's not about the quantity of connections you have. It's about the quality. Intimacy is more than just a buzzword. It's a profound connection built on trust, understanding, and mutual respect. And while it might not always be easy, it's always worth it. So the next time you find yourself in a conversation, take a moment to truly connect. Dive deep, share openly, and listen intently. Because in the dance of intimacy, every step, every move, and every moment counts. All right, let's take a moment and think about an onion. Yep, you heard me right, an onion. Layers upon layers, each one revealing something deeper than the last. Now, what if I told you that our relationships, much like that onion, have layers too? Intrigued? All right, so let's dive into that. Altman and Taylor, in their groundbreaking work from 1973, introduced us to the social penetration theory. And no, it's not about diving into a pool. It's about understanding the depth and breadth of human connections. These two scholars likened relationships to a multi-layered onion, where each layer represents a level of self-disclosure from the outermost superficial layer to the innermost intimate core. So picture this, you meet someone new, the initial conversations are like that outer skin of the onion. It's light, it's casual, easy breezy. You talk about the weather, your favorite movies, maybe even the latest viral meme. This is the superficial layer, right? It's safe, non-threatening, easy peasy. But as time goes on and trust starts to build, you peel back that layer, revealing the next. As you move deeper, the conversations shift you start sharing personal anecdotes, your aspirations, even your fears. You're now navigating the semi-private layers. It's a bit more vulnerable, a tad more revealing, but it's also where the magic starts to happen. This is where bonds begin to solidify, where trust is truly tested and solidified. But wait, there's more. As Altman and Taylor highlighted, the innermost layers are where the deepest levels of self-disclosure reside. It's the core of the onion, the heart of the relationship. Here, you share your deepest secrets, your most cherished memories, and your most profound fears and dreams. It's raw, 
It's real and it's incredibly intimate. Now, you might be wondering, why does this layering matter? Well, it's simple. Relationships aren't static. They're dynamic. They evolve, grow, and deepen over time. And the vehicle driving this evolution? You guessed it. Strategic self-disclosure. By choosing what to reveal and when, you're not just sharing information. You're inviting someone into your world layer by layer. But here's the kicker. Not every relationship will reach the innermost layers. And that's okay. Not every connection is meant to be profoundly intimate. Some stay at the superficial or semi-private layers, and that is perfectly fine. What's important is recognizing the depth of each relationship and nurturing it accordingly. Altman and Taylor's social penetration theory isn't just a theory. It's a roadmap guiding us through the intricate dance of human connection. It reminds us that relationships like onions are multifaceted. They require care, patience, and most importantly, strategic self-disclosure. So the next time you find yourself in a conversation, think about the layers. Where are you in your relationship onion? Are you skimming the surface? Are you diving deep? Remember, each layer offers its own unique flavor, its own unique connection. Cherish them all. In the grand tapestry of human connections, the social penetration theory shines a light on the beauty of depth, the joy of discovery, and the power of vulnerability. So here's to peeling back the layers one conversation at a time. All right, let's play a quick game. Think of someone that you truly, deeply care about. Got them in mind? Great. Now think about the conversations that you've had with them. The late night chats, the heart to hearts, the moments of raw honesty. Feels warm and cozy, right? Well, there's a science behind that warmth. And we're gonna dive deep into it now. So Collins and Miller, in their insightful research from 1994, embarked on a quest to uncover the link between self-disclosure and affection. And folks, the findings? They're nothing short of fascinating. First things first, let's talk about the meta-analytic review. For those of you who might be wondering, meta what now? Think of it as a research method that combines the results of multiple studies to draw a bigger, more comprehensive picture. And the picture Collins and Miller painted, it's one where self-disclosure and affection are intertwined in a beautiful dance. Their findings revealed a clear and compelling pattern. When people open up, when they share their thoughts, feelings, and experiences, it leads to increased liking and affection. It's like a secret ingredient that turns casual acquaintances into lifelong friends and fleeting romances into enduring love stories. But why? Why does sharing our innermost thoughts and feelings lead to such profound connections? Well, it's simple really. When we disclose, we're not just sharing information. We're sharing a piece of our soul. We're saying, hey, this is me and all my messy, beautiful glory. And that kind of raw honesty, it's magnetic. Imagine this, you're sitting across from someone and they share a personal story or a deep-seated fear. In that very moment, they're not just another face in the crowd. They're a living, breathing human being with dreams and fears and experiences. And as they open up, a bridge forms connecting your two souls. That bridge? It's built on trust, understanding, and yes, affection. Colin and Miller's research also highlighted another crucial aspect, reciprocity. When one person opens up, it creates a safe space for the other person to do the same. It's like a domino effect of vulnerability where one person's disclosure paves the way for another's. And as this cycle continues, the bond strengthens, solidifying the foundation of trust and affection. But here's the thing. Self-disclosure isn't just about deep, heavy conversations. It's also about the little things, sharing a funny anecdote from your day, talking about a book that moved you, or even discussing your favorite pizza toppings. Each disclosure, big or small, adds a brick to the relationship, making it stronger and more resilient. In the grand scheme of things, Collins and Miller's research is a testament to the power of human connection. It reminds us that beneath the surface, we're all seeking the same thing, understanding, acceptance, and love. And the path to these treasures, well, it's paved with self-disclosure. So the next time you're in a conversation, just take a moment to truly listen, to open up, and to really connect. Because as Colin and Miller's have shown us, when we share our stories, we don't just build relationships. We build bridges to the heart.
All right, team, let's shift gears a bit, shall we? We've talked about the beauty of self-disclosure, the warmth of connection, and the magic of vulnerability. But what happens when the very essence of who you are is stigmatized by society? When opening up isn't just about sharing a story, but revealing an identity that might be met with prejudice or misunderstanding? Let's dive deep into this nuanced terrain. Enter the brilliant minds of Chaudoir and Fisher. In their 2010 study, they tackled the intricate world of self-disclosure for those with concealable stigmatized identities. Now, if you're wondering what's that fancy term, think of identities that aren't immediately visible but carry societal stigma. This could be anything from mental health conditions to certain life experiences or orientations. Chaudoir and Fisher didn't just scratch the surface. They delved deep, exploring the challenges, the fears, and the hopes tied to self-disclosure in such contexts. And trust me, their findings are a masterclass in empathy, understanding, and the human spirit. First up, the challenges. Imagine having a part of you that you fear might be misunderstood, judged, or even ridiculed. The very act of deciding whether to disclose becomes a mental and emotional marathon. It's not just about, will they like me, but will they see me for who I truly am beyond the stigma? But here's where Chaudoir and Fisher's work shines. They introduced the disclosure process model, a framework that beautifully captures the decision-making journey and the outcomes post-disclosure. It's not a one-size-fits-all blueprint, but a dynamic model that recognizes the individual's context, the listener's potential reaction, and the broader societal backdrop. According to this model, the decision to disclose is influenced by a myriad of factors, from the perceived risks and benefits to the individual's readiness and the context context of the disclosure, it's a dance of introspection, judgment, and courage. And post-disclosure, well, that's where the magic, or sometimes the heartbreak, happens. The outcomes could range from relief, acceptance, and increased intimacy to misunderstanding, stigma, or even discrimination. But here's a silver lining. Even in challenging outcomes, there's an opportunity for growth, resilience, and advocacy. Chaudoir and Fisher's research is a testament to the strength and resilience of those with concealable, stigmatized identities. It's a reminder that every individual's journey of self-disclosure is unique, layered, and deeply personal. And while society has strides to make in acceptance and understanding, each act of genuine self-disclosure is a step toward a more inclusive, empathetic world. So what can we take away from this? Well, for starters, let's cultivate safe spaces. Spaces where individuals, regardless of their identities, feel seen, heard, and valued. Let's practice active listening, withhold judgment, and embrace the beautiful diversity of human experience. And for those navigating the journey of self-disclosure with a stigmatized identity, know that your story, your truth, and your identity are valid. Your courage in choosing to disclose or not is commendable. And remember, every conversation, every disclosure is an opportunity to educate, advocate, and connect. All right, my friends, we've been on quite the journey, haven't we? Diving deep into the world of self-disclosure. We've dissected the research. We've unpacked the theories. And now it's time to get practical because let's be real. We all want to know, well, how do we actually do this in the real world? How do we open up, connect deeply, and still protect our hearts? Well, I'm about to spill the beans on the ultimate strategies for self-disclosure. First things first, let's get one thing straight. Self-disclosure isn't a one-size-fits-all game. Just like you wouldn't wear the same outfit to a beach party and a job interview, unless that's your style, no judgment, you've got to tailor your self-disclosure to the situation. And guess what? Our trusty researchers from Green to Chaudoir have given us the tools to do just that. Tip number one, timing is everything. Remember that date where someone spilled their entire life story in the first 10 minutes? Yeah, not the best move. Self-disclosure is like a fine wine. It gets better with time. Start light, test the waters, and as trust builds, you can dive deeper. It's all about pacing. Tip number two, recognize the risks and the rewards. Look, I won't sugarcoat it. Opening up can be scary. There's always a risk of judgment, misunderstanding, or even rejection. But here's the thing, the rewards, they're golden. We're talking about deeper connections, genuine trust, and relationships that stand the test of time. 
So weigh the pros and the cons and then just trust your gut. Tip number three, it's a two-way street. Self-disclosure isn't just about you doing all the talking. It's about listening, understanding, and creating a safe space for the other person to open up to. So the next time you share, take a moment to pause, listen, and truly hear the other person. It's a game changer. Tip number four, mutual respect is key. This one's non-negotiable. Whether you're sharing your deepest fears or your favorite pizza topping, pineapple anyone? Mutual respect is the foundation. It means that valuing the other person's perspective, even if you don't agree. And if you ever feel that respect is lacking, well, it might be time to reevaluate that relationship. Tip five, practice makes perfect. Like any skill, self-disclosure gets a lot easier with practice. So start small with small self-disclosures, gauge the reactions, and adjust as you go. And remember, every interaction is a learning opportunity. So take those lessons, refine your approach, and keep on going. Now, I know what you're thinking. MD, this sounds great in theory, but what about real-life situations? Trust me, I've got you covered. Drawing from all the research we've delved into, from Green's foundational insights to Chaudoir's deep dive into stigmatized identities, these strategies are tried and tested. They're your roadmap to navigating the intricate dance of self-disclosure. So as we wrap up this section, I challenge you, take these strategies, apply them to your life, and watch the magic unfold. Because at the end of the day, self-disclosure is about human connection, right? It's about understanding and being understood. And with these tools in your arsenal, you're well on your way to building relationships that truly matter. All right, we've journeyed through the intricate maze of self-disclosure, and now it's time to tie it all together. So let's do a quick victory lap and recap the gold that we've unearthed. From the get-go, we delved into the essence of self-disclosure, understanding its pivotal role in building trust and intimacy. Remember Green's insights? It's not just about sharing, it's about strategically revealing parts of ourselves to foster genuine connections. It's like handing over the keys to our personal treasure trove, one story at a time. Then we explored the dance of intimacy with race and shaver, understanding that balance between revealing and understanding. It's a two-way street, folks. And let's not forget the profound insights from Collins and Miller, highlighting that sweet link between self-disclosure and affection. It's the secret ingredient to those can't-live-without-you relationships. We all have them. But of course, it's not all sunshine and rainbows and unicorns. Chaudoir and Fisher reminded us of the challenges faced by those with stigmatized identities. Yet, even in the face of adversity, the power of genuine self-disclosure shines through. So what's the big takeaway here? Authenticity. It's the game changer in relationships. By embracing genuine self-disclosure, we're not just building connections. We're forging bonds that stand the test of time. Bonds build on trust, understanding, and mutual respect. As we wrap up, I challenge you, be brave, be authentic, and watch as your relationships transform, blossoming into deeper, more meaningful connections. Because at the end of the day, isn't that what life's all about? Connecting, understanding, and loving authentically. Here's to embracing the real you in every relationship. If you're ready to take your communication game to the next level, then let me introduce you to the Exploring Academy, your ultimate destination to master the art of communication. Look, if there's one skill that stands out in every aspect of our lives, it's communication. Whether you're pitching an idea, navigating a relationship, or simply ordering your favorite coffee, effective communication is at the heart of it all. It's the bridge between ideas and understanding, between dreams and reality. Now think about this, we invest in our health, we invest in our education and our hobbies, so why not invest in the most crucial skill of all? The skill that can open doors, build lasting relationships, and pave the way for success in every endeavor. Exploring Academy is designed with you in mind. It's a space where you can practice, refine, and elevate your communication skills with expert guidance, interactive sessions, live video calls, and a community of explorers. You'll be well-equipped to communicate confidently and effectively in any situation. So are you ready to invest in yourself to harness the power of communication and unlock endless possibilities? Dive into Exploring Academy and embark on a transformative journey. Because remember, when you communicate better, you live better. So let's get 
get exploring. Now it's your time to shine. We've unpacked the ins and outs of self-disclosure, but knowledge without action is like a car without fuel. So here's my challenge to you. Start practicing thoughtful self-disclosure in your relationships, whether it's with a close friend, a family member, or someone new. Take that leap. Share a story, a dream, or even a fear. Remember, it's not just about revealing information. It's about building bridges of understanding and trust. Now, I want to hear from you. How did it go? Were there moments of surprise, joy, or even a little awkwardness? Well, that's all part of the journey. And each experience is a stepping stone to deeper connection. So drop your stories, feedback, and any aha, eureka moments in the comments down below. I read every single one of them. Let's create a community where we learn from each other's experiences and grow together. Because at the end of the day, it's our shared stories and vulnerabilities that make us uniquely human. So go on, take the plunge into the world of genuine self-disclosure. And remember, every conversation is an opportunity for growth. So treat it that way. Let's make each and every one count. Before you dash off, do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button below. And by joining our community, you'll be the first to get all the juicy insights and tips that we share here. And if you join our Exploring Academy, you'll get to do live video calls and have feedback sessions with yours truly. By joining our community, you'll be the first to get all the juicy insights and tips we share here. Plus, it's a fantastic way to support the channel and keep the conversation going. So go on, tap that button, and let's continue the journey of learning and growth together. And I'll see you at Exploring Academy if you want to join a community of communicators looking to excel in their careers, but also learn how to be a better human. All right, until next time, keep it real and happy exploring, everyone.